In this video of ABAP Beginners Part 1, we're going to discuss ABAP types and also some subroutines and write a short little program. Um, so talking through the ABAP types, there are um, eight different types and as you can see here out on SAP's website, you'll see what they are. Um, so in the numeric type categories, you'll have integer, floating point, and pack number. And they, they go into detail on what the meaning is. Um, integer is basically like a counting number, whole number. Um, floating point can have decimals. And then the packed uh, number can also have decimals, but the, the valid field length will change. Um, so you can look further into that, but for our sake, we're going to look at integers mainly today. The character types, you can see here, um, most often in the SAP you'll see the character type C um, and that allows for alphanumeric again you can see how big the field length is um, D is for date and it's in the standard format year month day N is numeric text field so it only allows um, integer based uh, numbers and those typically will zero pad I think that's what this zero to zero represents and then time again, it's a zero, um, zero padded field with hour, minute, and second storage. The hexadecimal type, you won't see this very often, um, but you can see how it's stored here. Um, some of you might be asking, well, where's string and where's some of the other types? Um, these are actually the predefined types that are based in the system itself. Those other types um, cannot be used directly as storage. So continuing on that same thread, let me show you um, kind of the beginning of our first program um, after the Hello World program, if you've done that segment already. So go ahead and log back into SAP. Um, for those of you that haven't done the Hello World program, please go view that and you can see how to get here. Um, mostly you'll probably be working out of the local objects again. Um, if you have a training session set up, I can show you what this report will look like there. But basically, if you want to create a new program, go to your package, uh, click Create, and click Program right here. Enter in the details, just a name, you don't need the top include, and go ahead and save that. I'm going to start working out of this program, or report as it states here, because it's a single, um, single screen program. And what we're going to walk through here is what we talked about a little bit. So we have data type I. Data type, sorry, num1 type I. So if I do a F1 on here, that always can take you to SAP help information. It may come up here in a second. <laughs> All right, so we have this data type listed, and I kind of want to know about I. I haven't seen that yet, other than briefly talking about it um, on the website. So if you look here, you can see all the, the using predefined types and how to do it. And this is always a good reference. You can always go back to F1 and check out how to use um, anything in SAP. And if not, Google is always your friend. So here again is the things we talked about, characters, numeric, packed, hexadecimal, and then it goes to show you example as well. So for our sake, we're going to go ahead and put data num1 type i. So we're going to create these, these two um, numeric fields and then a sum field to add them up. So as we walk down here, num1 is set to 2 num2 is set to 4 and then there's this next curious line it says perform add it using num1 and num2 changing sum and you're thinking to yourself wow that's a lot why don't we just have something like sum equals um, num1 plus num2 That should be all that you need to do this summary. But we start to get into a little bit of the reuse in the code here. So this perform statement is actually calling the add it form field. 
So on this form field, what we want to do um, is call a subroutine. The subroutine is just a little bit of reusable code, and it has parameters that you can pass in. So if you notice here, we're, we're using the using statement, and you can pass in add num1, add num2. So it's, it's asking for two field types. Sometimes these are um, strongly typed, so instead of type any, you'll see type i in this scenario. Um, but this also allows the addition of floating or anything else because of typing as any. So you see here again, we have kind of similar to what I had typed above, add sum equals add num1 and add num2. Now the changing parameter here allows something to come in and to go back out, whereas the using, we can only bring in, we can't change or manipulate it. So after these two get added, they get sent back in the add sum field, which is the changing parameter. So if we jump back up to, to where this is getting executed, it says perform add it using our two numbers. You'll notice these are actually, um, they're not the same name. So num1 here is speaking to the variable that we're using whereas add num1 is the parameter in the subroutine. So we're passing that variable into this parameter. And then changing actually brings back the change sum. So continue walking down this program here. Sum is now um, set to 6, 2 plus 4. Another um, subroutine that gets called in the add it routine is actually going to call out. So again, we have out called using add one and two with add sum. So perform out has out num one, out num two, and out sum. And notice it's just using these this time. It's not changing them. So when we go to write um, sum of, we can uh, basically not really concatenate, but just write out every piece of data that we have listed after each comma. And it will end up appearing like system's a little slow. There we go. So basically, it's going to go sum of 2 and 4 is 6, just like we were talking about. Now you're asking, why did we go to all this trouble of having these, these forms for all of this stuff? Why didn't we just write it out uh, once? Um, well, the second time through, now all you have to do is call it again. So now you want to do sum 7 and 11, you just call add it again. And you don't have to write any of this code right here. You already wrote it the first time. It begins to start to look at reusable code and how we want to use that. <laughs> Um, so that's it as far as your uh, first program that manipulates data and actually does something other than hello world. If you were lucky enough to click on the link at the beginning of the slides, you can actually get all of the training examples um, from a, a transport that I have listed out there. So if you don't have this already and you kind of want this and SAP isn't really big on GitHub yet or anything like that, go ahead and have your basis person import this into a sandbox system, or if you have the rights, you can do it too. I uh, hope you liked it. Thanks.